Hey everyone, welcome to Sketch A Day Live. Thanks for joining. I forgot to put my headset in here. Um, we're going to be continuing with digital sketching this week. Um, the theme for the sketch challenge, however, on the Discord server is transportation. So you'll want to... Um, let me get my, my headset thing in here. But you'll want to post those in the channel. All right. And that is going to allow you to get some feedback. Hopefully inspiration, help, all of that stuff. I've got a hard stop in one hour, so we're going to try and be efficient with our time. <clears throat> all right. I'm going to be using Fresco and Procreate today. Fresco is Adobe's drawing app similar to Procreate. Procreate 5X, I guess, is what I'm using um, as well. So if you want the full output for those on Instagram, YouTube, you can see this. I've got my little dongle here. So you'll want to head over to youtube.com slash sketchaday.com if you want the full output. All right, so let's go ahead and switch over here to our handy dandy. Is that the right one? Or is it this one? I forget now. There we go. <laughs> yeah, that one looks weird. Our handy dandy iPad flow here. Wrong image. Um, anyhow, just want to show you, recap what we did yesterday. So yesterday I went through and showed you kind of the perspective mechanics of drawing a vehicle did something simple here um so hopefully you guys were able to try something for yourself if not go ahead give it a try give it a shot see what you can come up with all right went through those mechanics like i said of drawing a car so looking at perspective we distorted looked at um elevation views as well okay I'm going to try and go over um, some lighting stuff. I got an interesting question as well. So I'll kick things off with a little lighting demonstration, maybe do a quick uh, request, and then I'm going to do some painting in fresco. So that's my plan. All right. So with that, I'll just show you a couple more layers here. Like I said, we went through a lot of stuff. So if you're a member, um, of the Patreon group, patreon.com slash sketchaday, you'll get access to this whole file. So you can look at all the layers, check it out. Um, <laughs> you can look at all the layers and check it out in high resolution if you want. You can even replay the file. So that's one of the benefits of a Procreate file is I can actually replay the whole thing, right? So you can see everything I did yesterday right here. So. As a patron, you get access to this file and you'll be able to see that as well. All right. So hopefully you guys are downloading. Thanks. Much love and appreciation to you patrons for your support. As always, thank you very much. Hopefully everything's sounding good, working good today. We had some hiccups yesterday as well. What's up, Latrice, A Perv, Thomas Christ, Tion, Tion, Sean, hello. First year of industrial design. Any drawing tips? I have many. I have many videos on my channel, so hopefully you check those out. All right, but there's a time lapse. We can scrub through. You can see everything we did yesterday right here. So this file will be available to you if you sign up on patreon.com slash sketchaday. You're not too late, Sisman. You're not too late. We're just getting started here. Um, but that being said, let's go ahead and create a new document. I'm going to do tabloid or a three size. What's up, Roshan? You're in the wrong spot though, Roshan. Head over to YouTube. I do have a YouTube. <laughs> uh, you stinker. I love you. All right. I'm going to use my brush pack here again, created these for use in procreate. I got some feedback. Some people are saying that the tilt functionality wasn't what they expected. You can always... You can always change the settings if you want for your brush by tapping on the brush. Tap again. I have some preset settings here for taper, shape, so forth, mixing, dynamics, but you're welcome to customize. This just gets you um, a little bit closer to having a good set of design sketches. Can I render a car sketch on Procreate? Um, probably not today, but if you catch the live stream from yesterday, I did show a little bit of that. Thank you, Antibus, Yellow Cheese. <laughs> What's up, Roshan? <laughs> You're killing me. All right, quick warm up. I'll just do a few of these, not too much. I do have to go pick my kids up today in a little bit. 
Just get some circles in. And let's get some ellipses. Normally I'd do a few, like I'd dedicate a whole page to each of these exercises, but I do want to move a little quickly. So if you have any specific requests that are instructional and won't take too long, I'll be happy to take a look at those. Um, I'm going to be doing a little bit of quick oil painting in Adobe Fresco because I want to show you some cool stuff there. I'll try and work in, I have a set of brushes for Photoshop as well. You guys are welcome to check out on sketchaday.com. In addition to that, I just launched on the website as well. <laughs> that beard of wisdom is getting serious. I need to trim it. I do need to trim my beard. How do I stream and sketch so much? <laughs> How do you design so much, dude? Do you have a life outside of design? That's the question. You're like posting every 15 minutes or something. I'm gonna tell your boss. Just kidding. Just kidding. So I got a new microphone for the studio. For those who are audiophiles or into audio, it's the Shure SM7B. However, I'm still waiting on my XLR interface for my computer because I ordered it um, on eBay and it takes forever. So some really good Prime Day deals as well. I posted those in the Discord. You guys can check those out. And then one last mention here. Well, there'll be many mentions. Here's a link to all the stuff I use. So if you're curious about Unicycle, I could do that. If you're curious about... Uh, all the materials I use, you can check out there. Okay, so someone asked me um, in a message. In fact, I should record this because, let's see, will this work? Okay, it's recording somewhere. Um, someone asked me this question about lighting. Okay, how do you do an indoor light on something? So I wanna talk about that. I'll talk about the difference between indoor and outdoor lights. Typically when I do shadows, I assume that the light is coming from outdoors because it's a little bit easier than doing the indoor light. All right, a little bit easier. Bam, says Roshan. Got my afternoon coffee here. I need I need all the help I can get. You know, not everyone can be like my man Roshan here. Do amazing things with one hand tied behind his back and one eye closed. All right, so I'm using my rough stencil. Let's just start with something like a simple box. I'm not calling it a cube because I don't want you to hold me to the exact proportion here, but let's start with a box like this. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead, I guess since this is digital, I can do some fun stuff here. So on a new layer, let's determine where our light is. All right, so in determining where our light is, Okay, I need to think of a few things. This is gonna feel weird since it's the same shape, top or bottom. So I'll have to label this. It's the top, here's the front, all right. When I say front, here's my eye looking at this, this cube, right, or box. Mm. Okay, I'm going to shrink this just a little bit. You'll see why in just a sec. So I'm going to shrink this. All right. So there I've got this box. Now I get to decide, okay, if I have a light somewhere in the scene, I can determine its elevation, right? And so I can figure out what is the elevation of the light. How high is it up off the ground? Take a chill pill. We're all humans. <laughs> uh Yes, Seisman, I was drawing cars yesterday. Um, the actual file, so the pa the Procreate file is available through my Patreon. Um, and then the recording is on YouTube. So if you just want to catch the, the two-hour recording or hour and a half, that's available on YouTube and Instagram actually as well, archived. All right, so I have to decide what my elevation is, but also I have to determine... Okay, where is the light in relation to the object, right? 
which of, let's just say I had three, three, six, eight. Let's say I just had eight positions here. Which position is the light in? Is the light here, right? Is it here? Is it here? I get to decide that, right? Which position. So that's important to realize is that as, as the illustrator, you are in control of the position of that light. Okay, so now I'm gonna jump to this new layer. So let's say, much like this illustration, the light is off toward this side of the cube. Actually, I'm gonna pick this one right here. Um, so let's scribble that out. So let's say the light is off to the side here and I get to decide how high, right? So I'm gonna put my light bulb right here. Now, if you have a point light source, it's important to recognize you know, if this were a lamp or something, here's the base of the lamp, okay? And here's the center of that light source. So as I project these lines, hey, Tom, and this is this is where I'll use a quick line to help me. Um, well, maybe I won't, I won't. Hello, lines. Transportation drawing for today is a box. <laughs> no, I'm answering a question on some lighting. Um, someone asked about light and shadows on a simple object. So I'm gonna do that first, then I'm gonna do a unicycle, and then I'll start my uh, quick painting that I've been meaning to start of a vehicle. All right, so that's the plan for today. I got a question in. Hello, Stephania, Tom, Lines, uh, Julio, hello, hello. Okay. So here, now I need to do a couple of things. I need to take a look at these points, right? These eight points on my cube, the top and the bottom, and that's gonna form my, uh, the basis for my shadow, okay? So this is a point light source, let's remember that. Let me make sure I'm on the right layer. Okay, we can turn that on or off, cool. So point light source, so now from the base, I'm gonna project through all these points, right? I was gonna use the quick line tool, but why use that, right? When we don't need to. All right, so we're getting some funky stuff with this point here, where we've got two lines slightly diverging from each other, but I'll show you anyways. If this light were slightly moved, the shadow would move as well, but let's just continue. Now I wanna go from this center of this bulb, okay, all the way through each of these points. So through here, okay, just like that. So we'll have a point somewhere here. I'll go through this point as well and make sure that you're intersecting, okay, at the right spot, somewhere there. And then this one, right, I need to go through this corner somewhere here and I don't believe well let's see okay there we go we'll go through this point on the front as well so now we've gone through the top four points okay like so and we have four points like so so essentially what we're doing is projecting we're projecting the top of this cube or box we're projecting the top here this top shape and finding the, whoa, we have this really weird shape that's projected down, okay? And now all you have to do is connect the corners like so. So because of the position light, like I said, there's this weird little spot on this side, but if you're able to move the light to a more favor favorable position, this is how we calculate the shadow, okay? Um, let's assume, I hope this is all sealed up. I guess I'll, I'll just hatch it. We'll just hatch it. So then you can just shade this in like so. And that is our shadow, all right? So if the light source were moved slightly, I'll, I'll do another example. Let's have our light source here and I'll do these in green. <clears throat> so let's have the light source moved to here. I'm also keeping the light source fairly close, okay, to my cube because I don't wanna run out of space. It's just something I know and understand. Um, they'll run out of space. Ollie Design UK is asking, what affordable markers would you recommend 
for under $20. Probably Bianyo or Ohuhu. You can find that uh, using the link sketchaday.com slash stuff. Or there's a little sidebar that says resources on the webpage. Um, hello, Mecha Art. <laughs> this is how to add a shadow to a gerbil. Just kidding. Okay, so now I'll go through these points just the same, right? So one, two, three, four. Again, we're on a new layer. And this is this is creating the shadow with some simple shapes. However, you could do this with a more complex shape as well. So certainly not outside of the uh, realm of what you can do using this technique. Okay. Just changing the music up because I don't know. I've been getting a few copyright strikes and I don't wanna don't wanna run into any trouble. Shout out again to Paul Sohi for uh sorry, I just got a couple reminders here. Uh for the music. <laughs> Alright, so now we'll go through this point like so. And look at this line. We kinda have this triangle, so there is a point right there. Okay, now I can go through this edge right there, all the way out. Also, the higher up the light, the less, uh, what's the word, long or far out the shadow will be. Somewhere there. And then I can go through this point. All right, I want to track where this intersection is happening right there. And we can go through this point as well. Now that corner of this shadow in particular is within the bounds of what my main shadow would be. So I just basically need to create this outline like so. And I get this really funky distorted shadow shape. So when you're dealing with a point light source, you're dealing with diver uh, divergent lines. Okay, if you're gonna be dealing with some divergent lines happening on your shape. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> Hello, Matthias. Thanks, Tom. Uh, let's see, a fun sketch would be the one man band from Mary Poppins, like a bike with an entire set of instruments. Yeah, that would be that would be fun. I would need to look at reference for that though, to get it right since I'm not a musician. Can't pull that one out of nowhere. Okay. Sorry, I hate when my phone does this thing. Okay, there we go. Now I can see you Instagrammers. Um, again, if you want the full stream with the full output, I've pinned the link there. That's where you wanna be, youtube.com slash sketchaday.com. Just, it just works better on the iPad if you do that. All right. So that's a divergent shadow. So now let me show you the difference. We'll turn that layer off. We'll turn this layer off. Um, the difference with a sunlight shadow now is that with a sunlight shadow, I still have to determine where the light is. However, the sun essentially is a point light source. It's still a point light source, right? It's just that it's so far away that the... Uh, the spread of those lines is barely noticeable. Okay, so think about it like that. It's barely noticeable. Stephanie is asking, how do I do that with something spherical when there are no corners? Okay, I can show you that. <laughs> this will be the shadow show. All right, so with, a, with the sun, instead of coming from the point, remember the point is far, far away. So instead of coming from the point, I just assume that these lines are all parallel. So I would project parallel lines through my corners like so okay and then I just determine okay where is the Sun in relation to everything else where where am I landing here okay and so I can just pick a random direction and just draw parallel lines from the base of each of these points okay so one two three four one, two, three, four. And now where these intersections happen, right? I'm gonna have an inter, let's, let's do a different color for these intersections, I'll do blue. So I have one intersection there, okay? Look at this line, where's the top corner and this projection happening, cool. 
This is for that back edge. So I've got a point here. And then for this corner, I've got a point there now. So all I have to do is connect these like so. And that is going to be my shadow. So we had a great question from Stephania. What do you do with round objects? How do you get the shadow of a round object? All right, that's a good question. Um, so if I have something of, let's say, um, I'll just do a cylinder, or do you want to see specifically a sphere? Let me know. Do you want to see a sphere specifically or a cylinder? I mean, the sphere and cylinder are somewhat similar. A stream of shadows coming soon. <laughs> Welcome to the shadow show. I think it's important if you're going to draw stuff, you have to understand how stuff works. Like you can pretend and fake a lot of stuff. So someone who draws really good figures is because they've studied the human body and they're always constantly observing. Um, okay, let's do a sphere. They're, they're constantly observing real life, things in real life. So it's important to keep your eyes open. Draw from observation so you can draw from imagination. All right, so let's do a sphere. Nope, that's my finger on the screen. All right, so let's say I have a circle. Okay, that is freehand, by the way. <laughs> let's say I have a circle. Normally, when, when you have a shadow for a sphere, you'll see someone do something like this. But why is that? Why does it look that way? I think, I think that's the question, right? So, that being said, let's make a new layer here. And we'll do all the construction stuff on top. So, here's one thing you need to understand. No matter where I cut this sphere... Okay, no matter where I cut the sphere, this profile, I'm like teaching you guys way too much stuff today. Just kidding. If you need more information, you can always hire me to teach you, either one-on-one -on -one or in a workshop. Okay, so no matter where I cut this, right, if I'm looking at my sphere and I were to make cuts, I'm going to get another circle, right? Even if I were looking this way and I then cut my sphere, right? This profile right here, that's going to also be a circle. So it'll always be a circle. Okay, why is that important? Well, think of it this way. If I find the center, oops, if I find the center of this sphere, right, I can still draw a line like this. It looks like it's in 2, 2D right now. Okay, but this is, let's say this is the center of the sphere, right? Because I could draw an ellipse like this, and I could draw an ellipse like this. Maybe that'll make you feel better. But that is the center of the sphere in perspective, all right? Now, depend, this is the widest point on the sphere, okay? At this point, if I, if I were shining a light, like if I had a flashlight and it, it was shining light here, but it's, it's a sun powered flashlight. So it's like the sun, right? So I have parallel light rays, right? At a certain point on this sphere, the light rays won't be able to pass through, right? So in 3D, now remember this line carries around. So in 3D, at this point, everything everything on this side is in shadow, is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so this is all shadow. Stick with me here because this will make sense. All right, so there's our shadow. Now, what if, you know, there's a ground plane here, for example. Okay, there's some ground plane, meaning some surface that this sphere is, rest, sphere is resting on. Okay. A certain distance from the center of the sphere and up, you know, whatever we decide is going to be the sun, okay? Because I'm just going to do parallel light rays here. All right. <laughs> Roshan says I'm stuck. I just witnessed that circle. Hello, El Blondie 69 um, Roshan, by the way, I sent someone your way, well, to your partner's way for a workshop, so in Europe. So look out for that. <laughs> Okay, so somewhere from the center, okay, 
And if I drop the center down, okay, remember there's there's ellipses here that get progressively smaller and smaller and smaller. So one could say this is the point of contact on this ellipse, or I suppose a bit more overlap here. Somewhere in here, there's a point of contact, right? So over to this point and then up, we've got the sun, all right? Multiple light points, you just need to do this exercise I'm doing with multiple lights, okay? So I'm gonna show you here how this works. All right, so again, going back to our previous image, there's a certain halfway point, okay? There's a certain halfway point on this sphere where light will not pass, okay? Something like that, okay? If we just had one light source. So that being said, I can use that cross section, right? I just have to determine, okay, what's the angle? Oops. What's the angle of the light? So let's let's just say it's this, for example, right? Something like this. And I'm just gonna draw some parallel lines here. Okay, so again, if this is a circle from the center, right here and here is where we're gonna have just shadow happening. Okay, and depending on your point of view, we can just sketch a nice ellipse here. Depending on your point of view, that would essentially be the cross section at that point. Okay, so to figure out the shadow and the projection on the ground, what we actually have to do, let's make a new, new, new layer here, but I'll use this as a guide. Let's duplicate my, my ellipse here for my cross section. All right, so at this point, what I need to do Okay, we're on the right layer. There's the center of my sphere. And just for reference sake, I'm gonna lower the opacity here so we can kind of track what we're doing. All right. Hello, Abrar, automotive designer. Welcome, welcome. Um, <laughs> Roshan, I blew, your, I blew your brain up with that one, huh? So this is where it gets a little complex and potentially messy in terms of the drawing. So I'm gonna switch color again. All right. One thing we can do is we can split the circle into, let's say eight points, something like this. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and split the circle. So now I have one, two, three, and it really doesn't matter so much where the points are, but um, this one's a little bit off. So I'm gonna change that. But you'll see it doesn't really matter that much where these points are. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna treat this cross section almost like, and this is why I usually start with a cylinder here, um, because understanding how to project the shadow from a cylinder helps you project the shadow for a sphere. Because on a cylinder, what you try to do is get the corresponding top and bottom points on this cylinder and then project, okay? And that's your first point. That would be your second point and so forth. And eventually what you'll notice is essentially you have an ellipse, okay? If I were to project all these points and connect with curves. So similarly here, what I would do is project down, find the ellipse, right? That de determines this bottom and then project all these lines down okay just like so because we're essentially taking this top shape and trying to find okay where is the corresponding point so like i said here's the direction of our light so let's use what time are we at okay i think we'll be all right i may have to just do the unicycle, and that's it. All right, so still using my brushes here. And so now I get to decide, all right, in relation to my sphere, right, the sun is a certain height, but also what is the um, position related to the center of the sphere from a top-down view. This is a gerbil ball. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to pick an angle here. Let's go these two points, one, two, and now I can pick an angle, okay? 
But I just need to make sure I'm drawing. Parallel lines, okay, as much as I can here. And some of these points may overlap or feel like they're overlapping, that's okay. All right, I'm just gonna draw all of these out. Like so, like so, like so. And now we have the messy work of figuring out, okay, point connects there from here, right? Just finding, okay, where are all these connecting points to? Uh, I've got this one here. Three. Okay, that feels weird. I'm going to use that point. So right here, three, and then four, five. All right. So essentially what you're going to end up with is something like this. If you were to do it the correct way, which I'm not really right now, and here you can see this front edge actually pushes in a little bit, right? So this would essentially be the shadow in this certain position that I'm in of the sphere. So with a bit more accuracy, you can do this, this activity and come up with the shadow of your sphere. So if I had another light source, someone had asked, okay, I have another light source here. Well, I'll just have to do the same thing and you could shade in the secondary shadow a little softer. All right, you could shade it in a little softer. So that's how you figure out um, <laughs> sorry lines, it is involved. Um, but that's how you figure out the shadow on a curved object. Um, you take that learning from a cylinder, and I would suggest going through this activity a couple times, and then you're able to figure out, oh, that is how the shadow happens on a curved object. All right, well, what if you had some weird blob, right? And it's resting on a surface. How do you do that? Well, you just kind of have to think, okay, what's the cross section here? Okay, and how do I, and you don't even have to, it doesn't have to be geometrically, shall we say, um, rational, right? It's just, okay, down to the ground surface, what would these points be? And then I can project through these points, right? And get a series of shapes. Okay, so that's that's essentially how you would do it. Okay, you can even see here as I start to um, okay maybe think of this as an ellipse, ellipse, just to guide where I put this point. Um, but you can kind of see, oh, that's that's how this shadow might be. Right, we got this, something interesting happening right there, but um, that's how you you kind of work it out. Okay, so there there's a there's a rhyme and reason to how you do this, um, more than just oh I'm just gonna throw something down. <laughs> um, sometimes a shorthand for a sphere though is really just you know throw an ellipse down, and this is assigning this is assuming the light source is directly in front of the sphere, not off to the side, um, this way or this way because the shape would kind of change depending on the position, but this is a little bit of shorthand for just drawing that in. All right, Woo. let's make a new file. Let's do a unicycle. At least that was the, the request here. Are we doing this with a person on the unicycle or just the unicycle? What are we doing? I've got about 30 minutes, so this one won't have color, maybe just some light gray shading. <laughs> <laughs> Mecca. <laughs> so funny. Thanks for joining, by the way. I'm going to pull up some reference on my handy dandy laptop to the right here. Did I even zoom in on my overhead? I don't even know. At least we're not using the overhead really today. All right. Let's do a quick unicycle. In fact, I just need the gist of what it is. Um, and then I think I can figure it out and put a person on. So I'm just looking at some unicycles right now. Uh, oh, that's that's interesting. Electric off-road unicycle. That's that is interesting. But I'm just gonna do a standard 
uh, unicycle. So for this, um, I think what I'll do is just drop a couple lines in here for perspective purposes. All right. So I've got three lines. Maybe you guys can guess what these lines are, but um, this is the horizon line right here. And then I'm just sketching in some guidelines. If I wanted to draw a whole box around this unicycler person, it would look something like this, right? So I'm just establishing my perspective to start and perhaps a bit of proportion. And if I need to tweak that, of course, in Procreate, I can tweak that, right? If we just want to fill fill the page or whatever. Totally doable. Or hey, if we want to exaggerate our three point perspective a bit more, we can also do that. So pretty handy. Digital sketching anyways, um, certainly has some advantages. All right, so there I've got a little underlay to start to kind of guide me. Now, like I always say, when in doubt, rough it out. I'm just gonna use a red blue pencil technique here. Um, Fabian says, in Romania, we do online classes. And dude, I'm learning more from you than my teachers. Oh, thank you, Fabian. Mauricio, what's up? Hey, hey, hey. Thanks for joining. You don't need to be here, though. You're too good for this this, this business. Too good. All right, let's do our unicycle. Um, so I'm just going to throw a little line in here for the seat. All right, I'll just sketch a little shape like so. And the wheel, again, because I have the perspective set up, I'm just going to, just at this point, rough in a little point where we may have the fork beginning. Um, but for the wheel itself, right, we're in three-point perspective. I can just rough something in like this. Let's rough in two ellipses. And let's zoom in a little bit. And I'm just going to rough in... A fork All right so as I'm roughing these shapes in I'm really just trying to think okay what is the shape in perspective maybe this is like a fat tire unicycle or something um, and then here's the the axis and I can check my perspective because I already set that up okay so there's my axis and now like I said I was gonna include a person here so with my red, I'm just going to draw a box for some hips. And let's say this leg here is more down. And OK, if this one's down, right, if the, the pedal looks something like this, right? So if this leg's down, then this one needs to be up, All right? And if that's up, I can sketch basically two cylinders, like so. Someone had also asked, hey, can you do some figure drawing on your channel? I'm just going to do figure drawing for design right now. All right, so let's just sketch another box for my, my body here. Okay, there's my leg seat. And I don't know what this... This person's arms are doing but I'll just do two cylinders as well okay and again because because of this underlay I did for the perspective it kind of tells me hey if this is the neck head chin whatever I'm gonna see a little bit of underneath the chin Right, and it kind of gives me some direction for how I would orient the head in my sketch. All right, so we'll just rough that out. Maybe they're being careful, just blocking the hand here. Maybe they're being a little careful and kind of sticking, sticking their hand out a bit can do that and just to make drawing the body easy um, and this foot actually I do want to correct something here I'm gonna rotate the foot ever so slightly like so just a bit more cool 
So one of the advantages of working digitally, I suppose, is quick transforms, things like that. All right, so there is the rough sketch beginning of the Unicycle. <laughs> Learning to draw clowns with Spencer Nugent. <laughs> Highlight of 2020, awesome. Um, yeah, Mauricio does awesome work. If you're not familiar with him, I will happily share his profile, especially if you like um, more painterly illustrated style. Hopefully you're still on the stream. Um, check him out. He's a furniture designer, creative director at Moke Studio. Um, really, really awesome work. So I'll post his link in the chat right there. Okay, you guys can check out his profile. Give him a follow, give him a like, all that good stuff. Super talented. All right, so now I've got this underlay and I'm gonna make a new layer. At this point, I can probably, I can do a couple things. Like if I feel like, if I feel like he's, or this person is positioned too um, high, right? We can, we can move the unicycle down a little bit, okay? change the position of the legs, all that stuff. We can do all that. So, and then just kind of modify as we go. So yeah, maybe the seat needs to be a little bit higher. I think so. Um, and yeah, we've got that three point perspective grid or guide here at play. And just a couple surface lines to help us out. So we can do something like that, all right? So, yeah, no problem, Mal, you, you do good work. Um, why did my Procreate just freeze up? Okay. <laughs> uh, merge, I always forget if it's merge or combine. I just, I always think in terms of, okay, do I wanna flatten these layers? What's happening? We've got a lot of people on the stream today. Maybe I should do more more digital stuff. So again, I'm using my brushes um, in Procreate here. Um, I think, yeah, because I'm going to run out of time. So I think tomorrow I will do a little bit of painting. Um, I'm going to be painting for you on YouTube. Let me switch here. Yeah, I'm going to be painting this guy. That's my plan. So I'm going to be doing this with oil paint. Um, not real oil paint, but digital oil paint in Adobe Fresco. And I'm going to kind of hopefully put it into some sort of scene or whatever. So that's my plan. All right. So let's get back to it. Leave me alone reminders. Jesus. I have to mail some posters. So I ordered my t-shirt samples for my new t-shirts and I will be wearing that on the stream soon. So that should be fun. Just trying to adjust the opacity here. All right, so now for the easy part, you take this rough stencil, or if you want to use something of a tracing style, we can do that as well. The bike disappeared. Bike's still there. It's still there, don't worry. All right, but now I can kind of sketch in, let's say there's some sort of knee pads, because you want to be safe, right? You don't want to be unicycling I really need to practice my folds, my clothing folds. It's something I haven't practiced much. And what I'm trying to do here is just resketch. Okay, so it's not about, um, I like joggers. It's not about um, tracing carefully but rather just redrawing and using your initial sketch as somewhat of a guide. Okay, and you get to decide how much detail you wanna put in there. All right, do they only come in black? I always wear black, yes, <laughs> only black. I do wear a lot of black, I really do. Um, black to me is just simple. I don't have to think about it. I just, I open my drawer and it's just like, okay, 
which black shirt do you want to wear today? I don't have to be like, does this color coordinate with this one? And are people going to notice if I wore the same shirt yesterday or two days ago or whatever the case may be? Yeah, I don't know how the hubs on unicycles look. Let me see if I can at least rough something in here. Um, they look pretty straightforward, so I think I'm okay. Just, just kind of hinting at whatever. Now, if this was like real client work, I would actually reduce my brush size, okay? And come in here and be a little bit more careful. But I'm kind of just attacking this from like just a big point of view. All right, so yes, Procreate does have quick line tools and all of that good stuff. You guys love to use them. But I like to practice. So, and I highly recommend it as well. Um, don't get too dependent on tools because there are gonna be times, especially if you're a designer in your career, where you're not gonna have access to those tools. So being able to sketch a decent ellipse or detail is going to be somewhat important. Let's put some, some nice lugs on this tire. Maybe it's a bit of a an off-road unicycle or all-terrain or something. This is a subtle move, but adding a little bit of line weight here like there's like 10 years of experience in that line <laughs> and i could show you but not right now i won't show you why right now just know there is a a reason to the rhyme so to speak should we make these nikes because everybody loves nikes nikes are all right i think people buy the symbol but that's just me all right, this broadcast is definitely not brought to you by Nike. <laughs> um, Sperry T, I wish I could stream Procreate, but I don't know what app to use. You can. Um, there's, I think there's, let's see. There used to be like a, a way to stream. I guess they took it out. I don't remember. Hmm. There used to be a way to stream directly from Procreate, but um, also I'm working on putting together a streaming guide. Um, if I were to hazard a guess how much money I've spent on this studio, though, it's probably easily in the five-figure range of all the equipment, lights, cameras, <laughs> all this stuff. So um, just letting you guys know, it's not... It's, it's not easy to stream, and it can be expensive, depending on which way you want to go with your, your streaming. Okay, so that's something you've got to... Why am I tucking his shirt in, or their shirt? Like they're super... Like they're my age or something. Sheesh. I like clothes. Actually, I learned this from Kim Kim Jungi. <laughs> um, clothes are a good way to kind of hide your lack of anatomical knowledge. <laughs> so, it's a little, little bit of a trick or cheat. Trick or cheat, if you will. I also love hoodies, so why not? Why not? But whenever I do people in sketches, and I'm, I'm doing way too much here, I try to not let the person uh, be the focus as much as possible, at least if it's a product sketch. Because as a product designer anyways, your goal is to show the concept, not um, show how good you are at drawing people, <laughs> if that makes sense. 
so just something to be aware of if you're gonna do this let's give him crazy hair And even as I say that, I'm spending way too much time on on this person, but whatever. So Sketch Today Live, by the way, thanks for joining, being a part of the stream. Make sure you turn on alerts and Make sure you turn on alerts and subscribe, is what I was gonna try to say. <laughs> um, and that's how you won't, won't miss any of the streams. I'm, I'm kinda, I'm feeling lazy and I don't wanna draw this other hand, so I'm just gonna hide it back there. All right, now let's do the hard work of this spoke. Or not spoke, but hub. Is that Pennywise? Oh my goodness. <laughs> You're the worst. Roshan. I take, I take everything nice I've ever said back. Just kidding, I don't. So for those who don't know, Roshan has a brother online don't worry i won't out him but uh we were talking the other day um roshan and i and i was like hey do you know so and so and he was like yeah that's my brother and i was like no way are you kidding and he was like yeah that's that's my brother i hadn't made the connection now i've been friends with this person for a long time the person that I didn't realize was Roshan's brother. It was hilarious, though. So anyhow, we started a group chat. And I was like, yeah, I had no idea you guys were were related, much less brothers. It's so crazy. I guess that goes to show how observant I was. I'm feeling lazy, and I don't want to do the, the work of verifying whether these spokes line up. So we're just going for, for general effect today. Alright, something like that. Maybe I'll have some time to start. Yeah, I think I'll have some time to start that. That other sketch. Alright, so I can turn off my underlay now. Underlays. And you can see there's our sketch. The wheel feels a little bit off, but I'm gonna I'm gonna trust trust the process, so to speak. Just a generic elliptical shadow here on the ground plane. And then, like I said, I was going to keep this kind of gray, so I'll use my real marker brush. There's also a clean marker and a blending marker. If you like brush markers, there is a dynamic marker where you can go from thick to thin. Right, so if that's what you want, let's use the dynamic marker because then I can kind of shade shade in a lot here and I'll, I'll also adjust the layer opacity to lessen the effect of this but I just wanted to add some quick shadow abbreviated shadows here not doing a full rendering or anything I don't know how many of you are going to Adobe Max or watching it I should say it is free this year but definitely check it out I do have a session on some just some quick ways to sketch products come up with a scene compile those things looking at a few different methods if you've watched me for a while it's nothing too new for you guys but certainly good reminders all right so i might do something along these lines and then let's get just some tone here. I 
but not too much, right? Just enough to reinforce depth and what's happening. Yeah, something like that. All right, so there's my unicycle sketch. Eh, the seat probably still needs to be a bit higher, but it's there. It's all good. Please add a clown nose to the clown. <laughs> okay, if you insist. <laughs> Apparently I drew a clown, is what they're saying. So let's go for it. I got to put this above my sketch, though. And then, of course, since it's a sphere, got to add some shading here. And we've got to add a little bit of highlight. Are you saying they're a clown because you wouldn't ride a unicycle? Is that what you're saying? Um, I think I think clowns have like blush and stuff, don't they? I think so. And then like whatever these are. Now it looks like a juggalo. A white supremacist juggalo or something. Just kidding. I don't think they are. Red Dot Award of this year goes to... <laughs> are non-clowns allowed to wear unicycles? I don't know. All right, there you go. There's my clown. I guess I could give him, like, orange hair or something like that. It's actually... I won't, I won't go there on the stream, but it's interesting if you read the... Um, the history of clowns and where they come from, it's actually quite interesting. So, if you want some heavy Wednesday afternoon reading, you can check that out. <laughs> so, there's my clown. Okay. What time is it? 2.41. I gotta go, but um, let's just at least get this ready in Procreate, or sorry, Fresco. Unfortunately, Fresco is a little bit behind Procreate, um, but there are some benefits as well, um, including being able to sync across uh, Creative Cloud libraries, if you have your files, color palettes, brushes, and all that. Um, but I do enjoy their live brushes quite a bit, so I'm just gonna drop the opacity, make a new layer. Um, live brushes are here with a little drop next to the brush icon. See, I don't have show touches on, but. So I'm just gonna start with just a round brush here and gray and see what we do. I actually feel like I should set up a scene first. So maybe we'll, we'll start setting up some sort of scene. And then before I commit to actually painting, we can continue that next time. We'll just sketch in maybe some some person or people taking a look at the vehicle. Like maybe I've got their hand looking down here. Got some other person just kind of chilling. Or maybe they're they're lighting up or something. But keeping it loose for now. Got some stuff on the ground. Maybe some elements in the background. You know, if they're in front of a building or something. Maybe it's some sort of, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, let's get rid of this one. Some sort of cyberpunk scene. Sketch some stuff in here. Oh, I guess I, I was limiting myself there. I don't need to. Could maybe have some some sign. Of course, we're gonna have a nice wet road. Some reflections happening. Just planning ahead, guys. 
And then, yeah, tomorrow I'll finish this up as a, like an oil painting, digital oil painting is my plan. Yeah, so maybe, let's see, if this were a street going that way, all right, we'd have buildings off here. I've just got to kind of scribble this in and we'll figure it out. All right. Well, thanks for hanging out, guys. It's been fun. We'll keep working on this. Come back tomorrow. Finish it out. Uh, FTIMDI says, clown with Nike shoes. Yeah, that seems appropriate. Clowns with Nike shoes. Because only Nikes would wear wear clowns. Uh, Mauricio says, desert scene maybe. Yeah, I mean, I always do desert scenes. So we'll see. I'll think about it. I'll think on it. Let's get some sidewalk sidewalk business here. Street building. Maybe we could even do like some sort of alleyway or something. I'll have to figure it out. But I definitely want the car to be a big focus in the scene, focus point. So yeah, I'll revisit this. I got to go do parenting dad stuff. Wow, this is the most concurrent I've ever had on the stream. So here we are. All right, so just a reminder, if you want to support, follow, all that stuff, all that information is in the frames of the video. Thanks for watching. Um, I'm going to export and upload the demos on Shadows for you guys. I haven't done that in a while, but I'm going to break out those segments um for you guys if you have a need or questions about shadows just a little bit of information there's certainly more we could do and uh if you are curious about more if you're with a school or organization and you want to do a workshop just hit me up um, easy to find on sketch a day thank you to the patrons latrice thanks for hanging tom was here lines mecca art some of our newest patrons i should give you guys a shout out specifically mecha art and lines or linus i'm not sure how to pronounce your name but thank you for the support and for being a patron it means a lot um, times are uncertain for sure no one knows what's going to happen what's 2020 going to throw at us next no one knows right it's like a craziest adventure <laughs> so yeah um much love to you all thank you and remember passion is the process okay if you're looking to get better at something, approach it with passion, dedication, you'll be fine. All right. Put in the work and you'll get there. I'm putting in the work because I still want to get better, even better. All right. Thanks, guys. Take care. And I will see you next time right here on Sketch A Day.